Welcome to Show Studio's live panel discussions. In these discussions, experts from all parts of the industry discuss and debate the most important Fashion Week shows of the season. Um, this is an extra one. We only found out on Friday that Kanye West was going to um, present. Um, and I'd like to start off, I'll introduce myself and then um, the panelists. My name's Amy Delahay. I'm a writer and a curator. My work involves um, interpreting, displaying, exhibiting fashion and dress, often in cultural contexts, usually museums. Um, and I'm the um, joint director with Judith Clark of a Centre for Fashion Curation at the University of the Arts, London. Um, my name is Randa Kerber, and I'm a menswear designer based in London. My name is William Dottira. I'm a creative consultant and writer. My name is Teddy Prince Fraser, and I run a creative agency of my brother and some friends. My name is Jalil Peraza, and I design buildings for a living, and I'm based in Los Angeles. My name is Nico Ballesteros, and I do film. Um, two of us were present at the show. Um, I, I didn't experience receiving an invite, but Jalal, I wondered if you'd say something about the invite was quite special, wasn't it? No, the invite was absolutely, yes. The invite was absolutely lovely and unique. Uh, was there kind of in the discussion of uh, when he hatched the, when Mr. West hatched the idea to send out this unique invite and yeah, ended up getting my thoughts on how he thought, how, he, how people would receive it. And I, I definitely gave uh, my approval, but I thought it was very, per usual, always aesthetically beautiful, very minimal, uh, and to the point. It took the form, didn't it, of an envelope in a, in a um, fabric bag, and on the envelope it said it was from the West family um, welcoming people to their home, and there was a warning, I think, that there were rattlesnake eggs in it. Yes. Um, and to keep the envelope cold. And so, of course, everyone's immediately tempted to open it. And when they opened it, there was a sprung te 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 technique where you got fired a piece of sage at you. Um, and apparently, it was an old cowboy technique. But so it was quite performative from the absolute outset, um, the show. Um, it took place on a cold Monday evening. Um, it took place outside. And the choice of building was interesting. Um, it was a Spesnaimea. Um, it's the headquarters of the French Communist Party. Um, and I'd read that it was, um, it was um, Kanye's favorite building in Paris. Um, it's a brutalist building um, with a curved exterior wall and a mound. And from seeing the show from the outset, to me, it felt that there were lots of biblical references and I wondered if if other people felt that in terms of the performance of the show? Yeah, I think I agree. I think I kind of looked at the clothing and I kind of saw Kanye and like his disciples. I could very much envision that there is a world within his world in which if, if he was to have followers following in the same way that Jesus did, they would be dressed. This would be the equivalent of what we would have seen previously. Um, it's, it seemed very like very cultish in a sense, not, not in a negative sense either, I think in quite a positive sense that this is really Kanye's stage and Kanye's world and everything is Kanye, Kanye, Kanye. Um, yeah, I felt the same. Um, it also made me wonder, I mean, they've obviously chosen this building because of the mound and I didn't know, it made me wonder, there's that famous um, quotation about, um, from Genesis about um, the mound is our witness today. Um, and that wasn't stated, but I felt it was probably quite I mean, the mound wasn't insignificant. Um, I thought the mound was about the homes he's been building. Well, I mean, they've now taken them down in, in Calabasas, the, the geodesic kind of yeah. homes that he's building. But I agree with the whole cult feel, that he's creating his own world and his followers, and he's giving us kind of an idea of how they dress and what they would look like. And maybe it's a, really a hybrid of the two answers, but n n no one's right nor wrong. I think the dome shape has been, like you said, you'd yeah. seen that we were working on some prototypes in Calabasas prior, right. and so we really like that shape. Uh, obviously, Oscar Niemeyer is one of the greatest architects. The sinuous curve of the facade. Uh, Nico, Nick, you guys all did a great job. Uh, and everybody involved with projection mapping on that uh, surface, it looked beautiful. But I do think, obviously, the garments have the, the materials, the, the, the color palettes have some biblical. Mm. I, I, I can definitely see how you extracted that and 
yes, I think you, you hit the nail, yeah, hit, you know, hit the nail on the head with uh, just him being in love with that form. That dome form has probably been one of his fa most favorite shapes uh, as of late, and he's been experimenting in recreating that shape and. Uh, Definitely one of our favorite forms. It's also a primitive natural form, isn't it? It's, yeah. it's definitely very primitive. I agree about the whole primitive approach. I mean, there's him and there's Marnie as well, which had a collection, um, Francesco Riso, with the patchworks and um, unfinished garments. I got the same sort of feeling with, with this collection, which I think is my favorite so far out of all the ones that he's created. That's really creative for me. That's not just... Because it's always autobiographical with, with Kanye, where it's his world. I mean, he had the, the track suits with Calabasas on the side when he was living in Calabasas. And this is a reflection of you know, his life in Wyoming. Um, so that's really interesting. But I think this one just comes together so much better than the previous ones. Mm -hmm. I think if you also look at Yeezy as like, it's obviously, it's not just clothing, it's not just music. It is him in his entirety. It's everything around him. It's his family, it's, it's his experiences. And I agree with you that I feel like this is probably the most complete. If you also take into like recent um, album releases, Jesus is King, like everything seems to make sense. Yeah, like, not it aligns. Everything mm -hmm. aligns perfectly. The whole journey in general. I think even the colors, like you compare it to the last seasons, and it's so much more breathable, so much more lighter. Um, and even with the fabric, the silhouettes, we're so used to heavier fabrics and heavier garments, whereas now we, it feels so much more lighter. And I agree with the whole primitive um, take. It's definitely kind of going back to this caveman mentality where I think in order to create something new, something um, innovative, you've got to start from scratch again. And I think the palette certainly struck me as it, it was almost like that sort of biblical landscape mm. in the mm. Jesus video. And I thought the, the sort of the striations of the mountains and it seemed certainly something natural. I was also interested in the fact that um, in that video, we see him driving through this like quite, it's a landscape without time. We couldn't situate mm. it in time, which is quite rare on this earth that we can't, there's mm -hmm. no sort of indicators of time. But what struck me was this particular image. It's of the animals. Um, and then there was this incredible raw wool in the collections. And I, it was almost like there was this sort of, it's like God made materials. It was like the raw wool, the wool is, it's not processed, it's not man made, it's yes. not, um, mm -hmm. it's, it's raw, it's felted, it's swirled. It, you know, it's almost like from nature. And those wool trousers are probably my favorite, uh, my favorite piece of the entire collection. But you can even look at the last reference and see how much of how Wyoming-esque the invitation was. As the resident historian, I always bring in the historical references. What really struck me was um, there was a Dr. Jaeger that was the founder of the Jaeger stores, and he was a complete fanatic about only wearing natural materials next to your skin and that um, your skin could breathe. And lots of the graphic imagery in Jaeger's archive is very, very similar to, you know, the llama and the sheep. Um, and there's that sort of, you know, just, yeah, wearing animal skin next to your skin it's breathable, it's healthy. Um, so that, I mean, that struck me too. Um, when I'm watching the shows, it isn't just all about the clothes in a way that when we look, look at lots of catwalk shows, it's, it's about clothes, it's about product. Um, I felt it was a sort of quite immersive experience. Um, it was, it was a dis uncomfortable experience to some extent. It was an uncomfortable experience watching it. Um, to start with, I felt if Kanye is about family and community and communality, actually, these models coming out were, they looked dazed. They reminded me of something like that 1927 Fritz Lang film from Metropolis. Mm. They were alienated. Um, so I felt quite haunted by it to start with, and it was the silence of the soundtrack. Um, and then there was all that beeping, and the beeping I thought was torturous. I agree. 
Do you know yeah, any car, more about it? I mean, the car, we were talking about it earlier, the car, apparently it's Uber drivers that were outside and they sort of created a, a soundscape of, 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 of car tooting or horns um, because the neighborhood wouldn't allow the music to be played or he's quiet to sing. But I think it was a really genius like um, solution to, you know, the pace of the models. This is for me, he's world Wyoming. It's the open play, I mean, open, open spaces. And then the car sound is kind of our current life. It's literally, you know, modern day life. It's sort of like so the like mechanical the world. It's the tension between the two. The sort of the mechanical world and the world he's proposing, which is, you know, it's padded, it's, it's about, you know, protection. And it's, um, I don't know, I didn't get a bad vibe from the models. Yeah, even... They look dazed, they, they're walking much slower, but for me it's about the pace of a, a slower pace. We usually, at shows, the models are quiet. They walk really fast. It's sort of, you know, you get a lot of clothing and a lot of models, and, they, and it's, it's quite sort of like uh, rapid. Um, how do you say in English? It's really fast. Yeah, fast, yeah. Yeah, and they're sort of walking slower, but then the soundtrack is, is, is in contrast. Yeah, I think the stoic nature of them walking like that, though, allows you to see it in like two different perceptions. One when they're in front of the dome, and then when they're in front of the dome, you see that projection mapping with the close-up and then the, this shot right here as well, where it's from the side. And I think that just allows you to look at the micro versus the macro of it all. And that's what he's always looking to do with these spaces he creates. And I remember one time we were shooting a Sunday service and he told me to shoot it like a bee would look at a human being. Okay. It's kind of like coming at different angles. And I think that's his whole purpose with the projection mapping, always looking at ways to present information in like a way where we're not always just in a rectangular world, even though that building is rectangular. It's like that integration. And like that's why the Coachella video back in the day was that circle, because it's just his per perception of a lens and, you know, why do we always have to translate media in the same way? Yeah. And I mean, you've got different scale there. You've got the models, the public that was there, the audience that was there, and then you've got the projection on the wall, right. which is huge. I mean, it's, uh, you know. It's super dynamic. Uh, it's interesting. Like the I mean, you know, but is, was there a reason it was held outside and at night and in the cold? I, I think, it would, the models it's an immersive and, experience, isn't it? It's about the models sort of and everyone being cold was probably just a casualty of war, actually. But I believe, uh, and Nico could probably uh, yeah. give, give, give a better explanation, but I, I believe how the models would be photographed and um, even looking at this, this, this feed in the stream, how they look up against the dome and being able to utilize the building, the facade, to, to map onto, whereas if we had done it indoor, you wouldn't have a surface of this scale to be able to do projection mapping, and to do any projection mapping. And the great thing about it was to see all the individuals who didn't make it into the show that were able to stand many, many, many feet, yards, whatever met, uh, metric system you'd like to use. Uh, and it's like the duality of the dome, the organicness of that against this like harsh, brutal yeah. uh, you know, building that even has this layer of plastic that we applied so that we could project onto it. So it's even more of this disconnect and how the models kind of come from that world and then they, you know, almost come home in a way to this alien spaceship. There was some reference I read that said that the clothes um, were intended as service clothing. That was the initial guide. Uh, now, obviously, the collection that you have in front of you is a series of it's input from several creatives, obviously, but the initial brief, the design brief, was to create uh, fashionable clothes for people uh, in the service industry. And when we talk about service, we're talking about janitors, cleaners, uh, repairmen, electricians, plumbers, workmen. So this is maybe a more fashionable take on workwear. Workwear, except it's right outside their price range. <laughs> Precisely. And? Does that matter? That's, maybe that's fashion. <clears throat> but I think, I think Kanye, Kanye has, has a huge influence in, 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 in sportswear, um, workwear, that people love it or don't like it. He does influence whatever. He trickles down a lot. The ideas trickles down into, because of how visible he is, maybe because of how much um, Kim Kardashian is vis uh, visible. 
this is going to have an effect, I would assume, on uh, sportswear design, um, workwear, that kind of thing. Might not affect high fashion, but this might trickle down into... Yeah, I can see that too. Uh, you know what Adidas does or... I, I probably agree with you with the sportswear, but I think when it comes to workwear, the priority of workwear is always going to be the functional aspect of it. True. It's always going to be how can it perform in a work. And you know... Yeah, midriff doesn't work, does it? Literally. literally, <laughs> literally. Um, but it's like, we're not talking... Workwear traditionally is inspired by people that are working and need products that are going to help make their lives easier. And I think inspirations have probably come from that and drawn from it. But there is, there is no way that I would imagine that this, this is, it might be inspired by, but it's not for. It's for the people that are there following Kanye West for, for the fashion and for his creativity and his, his way to draw from different references. Um, I would say they probably have more of an impact on sportswear, athleisure wear, high fashion even, than it would ever have on workwear. I, I, don't, I don't think we've ever seen a, a designer that's able to actually influence workwear, whereas we've seen workwear influence fashion influence in many a time. I feel like a lot of it's just drawn from being on the ranch too, you know, and just like finding that balance between, you know, having like an arc, like Terex or something or like a Carhartt. You know, it's not always just the coziest, but I remember he was talking about wanting to have a piece where it's like a bed and you could just like post up anywhere and go to sleep. Probably those, those outerwear pieces look like they lend. Yeah, and like one thing that I didn't really understand was the, um, the, the, the crop top puffer, you know, because it's such a, like a, a contrast, like when would you kind of need that? But I think, again, that's just going into the play of like, you know, Maybe that is like the fashion conversation. And in the reality, it might be worn over a jumper. It's, yeah, I yeah, think with the easy, piece. it's all layering. But one, back to the price point um, discussion we were having earlier, one thing you realize in all the clothing is the lack of trimmings. And um, I remember him mentioning he wanted to get away from stitches and from trimmings, no zips, no laces. Um, for him, that's his idea of like 4D, the future, um, which I also agree, I think that's a way to innovate clothing and finding new ways of trimmings, but also it lowers the cost dramatically. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, because even putting a pot kit in a garment increases the price point massively. Absolutely. And you can see the trousers are completely seamless. You've got a pocket that is part of the, the actual jersey, the knit. Um, so I think he is, um, attempting to bring the prices down and to kind of allow people who enjoy his clothes to actually wear it, um, which I hope one day can be a reality of seeing this kind of clothes down the street. I mean, on my way here, I was, uh, I was kind of researching a little bit the story of the Yeezys, and it was the same discussion he's had with Adidas, because at the end of the day, he wishes that his shoes would be affordable yep. to as many people as possible, but at the same time, if something is too available, it sort of kills the desirability, desirability, of, it, absolutely. desirability of, of the shoe. So they, they sort of have to go with a Jordan, the same way that they did with Michael Jordan. A three-decade plan of making them into iconic shoes for Adidas and, and, and not make them available too fast, too soon. Mm. I think one of the things that interests me is the fact that because the selling of the product isn't what's in the foreground, is the sort of performative aspect of the shows. Mm. Um, and I was just thinking that sort of in the 1920s, it was an incredibly, incredibly fertile and creative time where artists worked together with designers and performers and architects and stage designers. Um, and in some ways, we could almost, almost 100 years later, draw parallels because this is about collaboration, isn't it? It's about bringing together different creative people um, to present. It's more than clothes, it's a performance. It's an installation, it's... Yeah. Um, is it escapist? I just thought as well in the times of, you know, we're living in a bit of a grim reality mm. and at times of grim reality, in the 20s and 30s, we got surrealism. It, it, there is something escapist about this too, maybe utopian, idealistic. I think? think I think it is very. I thought about it as well last night. It is. 
It is. You've had different approaches during Fashion Week where Balenciaga was very real, very sort of, um, you know, fire stone, uh, brimstone and fire. I don't know what the expression is in English, but they had the, the, the set was flooded. They had the sky um, on fire. Um, with which LEDs, is biblical, which like is, references again. Yeah, 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 so you've had different approaches of dealing with the reality we're living in. Uh, and I think with Kanye, I, I just I, I kind of saw he's offering a solution, an idea, an idealized family that's a simple life, simple shapes, uh, cocooning, um, you know, away from fame. And, um, you know, he's moved to to middle America and, uh, you know, the new life that he's proposing and finding faith. Religion. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Going back to that natural. Yeah, yeah to in this natural. whole, like, I guess, seed to sow, which is kind of what you get from this collection. This, everyone wants to be sustainable now in fashion and it's, it's pretty hard. Uh, but I guess with Wyoming, you kind of have this, uh, I don't know, a bit of hope that there is this land that you could grow a farm and... Well, the hope was, isn't it, that if the fur trousers get ordered, that the, sh that the wool would come from the sheep on the ranch. That the ranch. Yeah. Seed to sow. Seed yeah. to sow, yeah. yeah. That's the Seed whole to approach. sow farm to table. Yeah. Sheep to sow. Sheep to sow, precisely. And I think that, I know for a fact that that was the vision. Uh, and so, yeah, like you said, uh, it's a meshing of the ideas, finding of faith, moving to middle America, and just the realization of all those things. What were you going to say? I know, noticed that you were going to say I was going to just talk about the color palette. So, and as, what are your thoughts on that? So, Kanye's first uh, collection, 2015, mm -hmm. right? Very dark. You're, talk, was, you're talking about season one? Season one, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, um, very, very dark. There was a lot of references, even in his, his music, <clears throat> Jesus, um, Blood on the Leaves. Like it was, there was a lot of references to like mm -hmm. quite a dark, it seemed like a quite, quite dark headspace. And this is just coming from someone that listens to his music and then reads an article here or there. And I feel like over the past eight seasons, however many years it's been, after listening to his music and then seeing his collection, also just seeing him smile at the end. Got it. I feel like he is now, well, now at a place where he feels like, you know, he talks about finding purpose. Like, felt like for a long time he was lost. Even listening to his music, like yeah. one day, like one song, he'd be singing about the fact that like he wants to be this good Christian. He wants to be this this great man. And the next song, he's talking about things that he acknowledges that he probably shouldn't be talking about and condoning. And I feel like this for me is just someone that just appreciates his artistry. It makes me happy just to see him happy and with purpose. And okay, so if 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 you're a brand and you present a collection, maybe you can dissociate the designer from the collection. <coughs> If you foreground your family as part of your product, as part of your, what, you know, as your creative act, can you separate the politics from the product? Should we? Is it important? Does it matter? I, I think in this, in this current climate, it's very hard for someone to be able to dissociate their professional life or their political beliefs or their religious beliefs with any other part of their life. And I think that there, there, is, a, there is a line that I, I've drawn, which is that if you've built a platform as an artist and then you use that platform to talk about other things, you are then opening yourself up to criticism of what you're talking about. Mm. It, like we said with Carl Lagerfeld, God rest his soul, um, he built a platform, we gave him this platform as an audience, as buyers, as admirers, because of his ability to design and create. We didn't give him that platform to basically talk shit on other people, Absolutely. abuse his position. Well, we agreed very strongly on this yeah. stance. And I think, the same, I think the same goes with like Kanye West. Like, you hear a lot, of pe a lot of people obviously got quite upset with his relationship, whatever it was, with Donald Trump. And at some point, you just got to be like, he's entitled to his own political views. He's not using his brand to push a negative message. And just because he aligns himself with him politically doesn't mean he aligns with himself with where that person aligns himself ethically or morally. So. So you think you can dissociate? Oh, a hundred percent. I think that you, if you so choose, some yeah, people choose to. Some, some people some choose to. It's their entirety of their brand. Um, that yeah, I just think the the point of a discussion is that it is it is critical debate, and that it's it's good that we discuss the more you know maybe the more thorny issues, the difficult issues. The elephant in the room. The elephant in I the mean, room. I've exactly. had that conversation with 
and uh, through different generations and uh, in my family and uh, with my nephews. And one is 13 and he doesn't listen to his music. He only cares about the shoes and he obviously is not interested in the politics. Mm -hmm. So for him, Kanye West is just an older rapper, um, hip hop artist, and he buys into the shoes. The 20 year old looks at a bit more because of being a millennial. Uh, he looks a little bit more at the, the polit political stance um, and, and the man himself. So I think, I think and then and, and in my age group, I think you can't separate. That would be like, you know, wearing blinkers. So it's, it's, a, it's a weird one with Kanye because I totally disagree with a lot of things that he says. Uh, but, you know, sitting on this panel, I look at the clothes and I look at the fashion Absolutely. and I discuss that. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, and he's certainly he's called out more than most people. Yeah. But I think the reason why he's called out is unfairly. I think that because of him being the very first of his kind to do so many things as a black man, that Absolutely. the black community looked at him and be like, you should be setting the perfect example, which is a responsibility I think a lot of people, we, we as a community, should share more equally. But the problem with that is that true equality lies in the ability to make mistakes and have the same opportunity to make mistakes and make good and bad decisions. Yeah, people. and to be provocative. Yeah, yeah I, I, to be entirely honest, there's not one, there's not one, it wouldn't be Kanye West if he it, if it wasn't doing half the things he was doing. Yeah. Um, I mean, he's unfiltered. I think he's extremely unfiltered, despite the fame and everything else. I think a thought crosses his mind and he just shares it. Which is actually uh, quite rare in this world where people yeah. are which is briefed rare, and... But, <sighs> but when you have no. the ability to... to I mean, you've got that much money, you don't, you don't need to worry about what you've got and to say. And the brand is, even beyond the money, the brand is quite durable. It can do a lot. Mm. So I guess net, net, it actually works out. And I'm sure if you ask him, he'll take the criticism and keep his life. Yeah. He's like, oh, yeah, net, net, it works out. I'm sure that uh, I'd be open to the criticism, too, if I had that many zeros in my account as well. So, looking at the press reviews this morning, um, a lot of the focus was obviously on North coming out and rapping. What were your thoughts? Um, as a mother, I actually felt quite complicated about a six-year-old child going out on... And this is entirely personal. Oh, about sure. a six-year-old child going out onto stage. My instinct is it's not what I would do, but who knows what I would do in that situation. And I don't know the child and if the child's got this incredible confidence and... But my immediate feeling was incredible discomfort. Um, but yes, she was fabulous. Um, she seemed pretty comfortable. She did, I agree. Her. Also, the, like, it, the entirety of her life is a stage. Like, yeah. she yeah. is constantly in the limelight. Absolutely. Regardless. And there's no way that she is ever going to be sheltered from no. the limelight that, you know, that the, the Kim and Kanye are constantly Absolutely, on. and she was good. I um, mean, she's part of the most, like, mediatized family. Your mother is Kim Kardashian. Exactly. Literally. It's sort of, <laughs> this, is, this is like, this is a Monday morning. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, and she does seem at Sunday service, doesn't she, as well? Mm. Mm. I mean, more power to her. If I had the world to give to my child and they wanted to do it, I'd do it as well. Yeah. I think the Kardashian have sold their privacy and, and, and that's, you know, the exchange they made for the money and the attention they get and, you know, it's a choice that they made and obviously the children get entangled with that, but in social media it's the same thing. A lot of people, you know, from influencers that involve their children, your family pictures being seen in public, you know, this is on a much bigger scale and for, a, for a wider audience. Um, I don't know, I didn't find it shocking because, I mean, you can see her on the... TV series. Yeah, absolutely. Look at the sense of, like, look, look at how happy he is and look how proud he is. Like, it, it genuinely makes me feel quite warm to see. It's just like a father very proud of his daughter. You can imagine him doing that in a church, in a church with a capacity of 100 people. He'd put his daughter up on the stage and be like, the stage is yours, the world is yours. Mm -hmm. So I get, I mean, I get what you're saying as, not, not as a mother. I can try and empathize as much with that. But I, I don't necessarily think that there's anything insidious behind it. I think that it's the entirety of it was just him, like, I can do this for you, and if that's what you want to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the undeniable humanity is what touched mm -hmm. everybody. Mm -hmm. For sure. Yeah. And I definitely empathise with you. Uh, <clears throat> I'm not a mother, but I can, for, I can surely see where you're coming from. I, I, I guess being six and uh, being with your life already, <clears throat> as much of her life that's already in the public eye, I think, I, I definitely understand where you're coming from. 
But <clears throat> I think my takeaway is this is the beauty of having a platform. I can have my clothes. I can have my family. I, it's the beauty of I've created my world. I've created my life. If my daughter wants to go on stage, I want these models dressing like this. If I want a puffer crop top that doesn't make sense and it's not functional, but I want to call it workwear, it's my world. And so I think that Kanye is really great at creating his world. And whether we agree with it or not, uh, he has the resources and the leverage and the capital and the ideas and the manpower to do what it is that he wants to do. And then maybe the most amazing thing will be is if he does actually change the broader world for the better yeah. with all those resources. Absolutely. Yeah, I believe that that's his, um, that is his uh, vision or mm. motivator. Has anyone else got anything they'd like to discuss that we've not brought up already? I like some of these shots that Nico and Nick got. Nico, could you just shed a little light on the process of just you and Nick, just the discussion that you guys had in terms of getting some of these shots and setting up these cameras? Yeah. And even just working with Nick, you've had more FaceTime with Nick than... I saw lovely um, images that Nick, that Nick could put on Instagram this morning from the show. It was one or... Yeah, and Brit too. Um, yeah. And Brit, yes. It's just been an evolving language since... It all, it all really started... Um, with the Sunday services on the iPhone. Like I talked about the B thing, and then I remember Nick came through um, to one of the original ones where Connie actually built this uh, structure with, uh, what was the material? Just like wood and plaster? Yeah, timber But and plaster. essentially it was inspired by his visits with Terrell. And uh, we were using just PTZ cameras at the time, little ro robo cams, and then uh, that was after the iPhone, and then the IMAX film started to form, and just through that, Nick really formed this language with Kanye and relayed that, and then uh, I think that consistency then picked up, and then Kanye wanted to maintain that level of cinematic yeah. achievement for every Sunday service, so we kind of just specced out you know, our shoot pack with cinema gear, and yeah, it's just uh, it's a language that's forever evolving at this point, and it's kind of just second nature. We just kind of know the dialogue and... Uh... Yeah, and the work with Terrell is hauntingly beautiful. I mm. mean, really extraordinary. It's perfect just with like, the natural light. That was like the key. And also, it's not, it's not something that you can experience remotely. It's, it's bringing that thing back to reality again where right. you're there and you experience it with your eyes. And it must be an... I think to be in that space must be extraordinary. Oh, man. Yeah, it's, it's an optical illusion. That's what you don't get on the screen. Yeah and you really have to experience the space. I mean, mm -hmm. he's a great lighting designer, but he's also a great architect, a great artist. So that was, no, it was an awesome space to, to be in. Would you say that just even? It was an awesome place to train in, just oh, yeah. as a cinematographer and just even and for the vocalists. Nick as well. You know, and, and you know, to train their voices in that space. And yeah, it was just, it was definitely, you know, talking about the, the cold for the fashion show. We were out in the middle of nowhere in the desert, so mm. there's a lot of elements. Uh, and it really just pushes you to really just get that shot and, you know, also for the choir to really nail that song. Because, you know, for them to nail a song isn't just to sing beautifully, but to reach this, like, peak of spiritual, you know, connection. And, uh, you know, for them to touch the, you know, Holy Spirit. So it was uh, a lot of components. I like seeing the dynamic between you, Nick, and, and Britt as well from IMAX all the way up to this show. I think that you guys worked together and I was able to shadow. Just look at, looking at Nick, uh, yes, you and honor. Britt, talk yeah. about the shots that you guys are gonna get to the sh from the show. And it's funny to say, the show was, the, show was the, the fashion show was extremely cold, it was outside, and I felt the same way that you did about the cars. I think without context, it sounds like a, a lot of people beeping or stuck in traffic. But what's so great about what Britt, Nick, Nico, the entire team. Uh, I know that there was a lot of people who worked on yeah, capturing Joe, this. Sam, even the ACs, it's just, we, we kind of figure out like what our, like, because Kanye always wants things to move quick, so we really have to innovate our camera packages from week to week. And, yeah. you know, if we're in Wyoming shooting a, you know, a piece, so it's just, yeah, we'll see where, where it goes. I think eventually we should just design our own cameras, to be honest. Wow, that's a bar. Do you know how many people the live stream reached, roughly, if you had to guess? I don't know the numbers. Uh, I was just behind the camera. Okay, but it's interesting that, yeah, the people who are able to enjoy the live stream and the feed don't feel the cold. So if it was a few of us who were on site that were there to, to feel the cold and hear uh, the, the honking of the cars, I think the product that you get, um, obviously that 
you, uh, Nick, and Britt contributed to the. This is oh, the man. tangible product that comes from the show and Kanye. Uh, I think it was worth it. And, and like I said, the audience members will never know how cold it is, but you get these great shots, these great angles. It looks really great. You guys did a great sh job shooting this. So is that a good point um, to wrap up? It's certainly unusual in a show studio panel to have people actually involved in the show mm. on the panel. Um, I'd like to say thank you to all the panelists. Thank you to everyone watching. Um, I need to read this. For more extensive Fashion Week coverage, be sure to visit showstudio.com. And if you're watching via Show Studio's YouTube, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe below. And we'll see you next time. Thank you. <laughs>